Hello, hello, citizens of the world. Shabashem's here, speaking from Florida, the beautiful state of Florida. Beautiful weather today. I hope you guys are doing great, better than great. <laughs> I don't know what's better than great. So I just wanted to come out today to talk about my book that I just published. It's available on Amazon and it's called The Power of Elite Interviews. Um, you know, this is kind of a conversation that I've been having lately just to build some awareness out there, what it is and what it talks about and how it can actually benefit you. I think that's the most important thing because truly this book, The Power of Elite Interviews, is written with you in mind. Hey Zahed, welcome. It is written with you in mind. Um, what is it? What is the power of elite interviews? So it's a book that I um, use pretty much to share my journey, my experience in um, doing these interviews with people from all walks of life. So last year, as you know, it was COVID-19. A lot of us had to pivot. A lot of us had to do something different because we were on lockdown. And the question is, what is that? Um, one of the things that I did is I started a show. But before starting this show, I was actually invited on so many different platforms where I was asked questions about my life, about my journey, and so on. Um, so I took all that and then I started reflecting about what is it that I want to do with it. And then I decided to get into the space of interviews. However, I had to spend some time with myself wondering what is it that interests me and what is it that I would like to talk about. And one of the things that I realized is I was really fascinated by success. Success is something that excites me, that I have a passion for, and I wanted to learn more. I wanted to connect with people who actually were successful in life and entrepreneurship. So that's what I was interested in. So of course, entrepreneurs... Uh, or entrepreneurship is about solving people's problems. And I was interested in learning about what are the problems that these entrepreneurs were solving and how did they go about. So after I conducted a number of interviews, I was talking to a friend of mine and he said, hey, why don't you write a book about it? And I did. So what are you getting out of the book? And then I would like to welcome the people here and if you can actually tell me where you're connecting from, that would be great. I always um, like to know where our people tune in from. So after I did these interviews, I started thinking about what have I learned and I condensed them in seven payoffs, the seven payoffs of conducting these interviews. So the first one is pretty much building communication skills. So many of you have been asking me, how can I become a better communicator? How can I speak better? How can I communicate better? First of all, why is it important? Why is it important to, communicate, to be a good communicator? Well, it is important to be a good communicator in every single aspect of your life. Every single aspect of your life, you need to communicate better. Whether you have a business, whether you have a job, a position, whether you are a father, a mother, whether you are... Um, Hi, hi Farhad from Pakistan. Whatever you are in whatever level of life that you are, it's important to communicate better. So many misunderstandings mis, um, and conflict happen because of miscommunication. So when you do these interviews, especially when they are live, you really have to be a good communicator or improve your communication skill. The other thing that I personally didn't have, but other people did, is that sometimes people are camera shy. Um, they're embarrassed to talk in public. You know, public speaking actually is number one fear in people. So by doing these interviews, by going and having conversations with people from all walks of life, what happens is that you are getting over that fear. All right, just do it. You do it today, you do it tomorrow, the next day, the next day. Well, you become better at it. You become less fearful of speaking in public and communicating with others. So that's really, really important. And it happens instantly. It's not like, oh, I need to do this for 20 years to become better. No, after you do it a few times, you already notice the difference. Um, I have been a public speaker for a little while, you know, so for me, 
um, the show wasn't really what helped me become a better speaker, but what helped me is actually the listening part, you know, a lot of, I mean, the chances to take the visa. Ahmed, I don't understand your question, sorry. So um, again, the listening part is a big thing. A lot of us are very, very bad listeners, especially culture, you know, within a certain type of culture, um, that is actually accentuated. Like for instance, um, in some groups or some demographics or cultures, people are worse listeners than others. They talk over each other, they're loud, they speak fast sort of thing. And it's almost like there is a conflict in communication. And I'm going to be talking about it, you know, another time. Um, in fact, I started actually having conversation about the culture, culture, how it is a hurdle for communication. And it teaches you things that are not very appropriate universally. Like, for instance, if you're interrupting people when they talk, um, in some cultures, it's fine. It, they do it and they do it all the time. They just cut people off. But in other cultures, um, it's, it's not acceptable. It's very rude, in fact. So understanding the rules of the game and how people need to communicate. Hey, Shaba, welcome, welcome here. Ahmad. Uh, I... I'm not sure. I mean, is it like a visa to visit? I'm talking about something and you're talking about a visa. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, so pay attention to your culture and how you communicate within your culture. And then when you're communicating with people outside of that culture, try to understand, be observant. Like they say, uh, we have one mouth, two eyes and two ears because we're supposed to be doing twice as much listening and observing than speaking. So keep that in mind. Keep really be mindful of that. Um, the other thing is not everything you have in your mind, not every thought needs to come out. You have to learn how to self-censor yourself. And you do that by composure. It's like, take a deep breath and then have a little filter. Is everything you think is worth saying? So that's very important. So I would like to do another segment just on communication skills and culture, how culture impact people's communication skills and how we can change it. Remember in one of the lives and probably I have a video somewhere, I was talking about attitude formation. By that, I mean that our behavior and our attitudes come from three sources. Number one is uh, experience. So we experience something in life, we build an attitude from it. Um, I don't know, like for instance, I go and grab a hot pot of tea with my bare hand, I get burned. So that is an experience. My experience is that this pot is hot and I touch it and it hurt me and it burned. So by gaining that moment of experience, now my attitude is that I am not going to touch the burning pot or the hot pot anymore. The second one is knowledge. I grab a book. Okay. I'm actually looking at this one. It's the keto book uh, for diet, which I just started a few days ago. So I'm reading, I'm gaining knowledge and information about what it means to eat or to be on a keto diet. Okay. This knowledge will lead to an attitude or a behavior. Like for instance, I cut all the carbs. I am not drinking soda. I exercise X amount of time. I actually even cut fruit because keto diet tell you that the fruit is not as good for you as we may think it has a lot of sugar. So this knowledge leads to attitude. So I am forming a behavior, a way of life from this book, from what I'm learning. That's knowledge part. The third one actually is the deepest one. It's come from a belief system and core values. So now when you think about how people behave, attitude, act and react, the chances to change any attitude that, that is based on at, you know, experience and knowledge is very high. But when you want to change people's attitude and behavior from core values and belief system, that's a little harder because it's hard to change people's belief. It's hard to, be, to change their core values. It's really what, 
you know, really frame them and make them who they are. So we have to understand all of this for us to improve our at attitude, verbal and nonverbal and other things or sort of things. So for you to understand where all these attitudes come from, it's super important to adjust to other things. Thank you, Shaba. Welcome. Uh, so this person is called Shaba Aziz Harab. So I, I don't know if it's a female or a male. Can you tell me if you're a female or a male? Because we kind of have the same name there, Shaba. That's why I remember you. You're always watching uh, my, my events. Thank you so much for being here. But I would like to know if you are a male or a female and where are you from? Because I'm sure I'm going to remember it. Anyway, so these are the things that I talk about in the book how to improve your communication skills. Listening and speaking are a very important part of it. And of course, when you sit around people who are ahead of you, who have done it, who have been there, of course, so much that you can gain and you need to be present with them to speak and to listen. So that's my number one take off or take away from these interviews. And then the next one is self-confidence. Um, I always say that I'm not lacking self-confidence and I'm grateful for that. Uh, Self-confidence is not something that you're born with, of course not. Self-confidence is something you build on your own. And sometimes your self-confidence really comes from adversity. You know, like um, let's say I have, I have an exam tomorrow and I focus on really doing what I need to do and study for it. And then when I go to take the exam, I do really well. Now I know I build that self-confidence that if I really study hard, I can actually pass the exam. Um, so these are the things you guys need to do to build self-confidence. You don't gain self-confidence by not doing. You gain self-confidence by putting yourself in that space and taking the risk and do it anyway. When you do it and you fail, you kind of learn why, and then you need to try a second time and a third time and then as you succeed in doing certain things, um, you know, you build your self-confidence. <laughs> That's wonderful. So Jenny says, I did burn myself and inshallah, I did learn from it enough yeah yeah exactly so that's the thing that experience you see that experience leads to an attitude so there are also other aspects um, that I talk about in the book uh, from you know your speaking your communication skills your self-confidence and then other perks that came along from these interviews were literally like connecting with an international community and building PR teams. And what I mean by a PR, public relations, is like any time I had a guest on my show, they brought their audience in. And of course, we exchange audiences and that's how people started to know me on their platform and my audience started to know them. So it's a very, very organic way to build an audience is really to be on different platforms and invite different people. You go to their spaces and you speak and they come to your space and you speak. And then, of course, it, it grows this PR team. Now, a lot of people might think, what if, you know, is it competition? Like, for instance, I invited consultants and coaches on my show. And is it competition? I... Personally, I don't see it as competition. I see it as collaboration because we share audiences and we share spaces and we share follow. Um, that's actually an amazing thing. You know, you promote other people as well. So if you have that abundance mindset, that is a must as an entrepreneur and successful people. You cannot act from greed, you know. When you have that abundance mindset, the more you give, the more you receive. So by me sharing my stage and my platform and my audience with other people, I'm giving them time, I'm giving them voice. And so again, it comes back in, in, in the law of attraction or karma or however you wanna, um, you wanna call it. Another one that I wanna mention uh, because it's, it's very important to me is building an international partnership. By doing these interviews and inviting people from all walks of life, I started connecting with citizens of the world and really so many great events came about from, you know, international summits and stages that I spoke on and just clients that I got. So it was an amazing, amazing um, exposure. 
And then last but not least, and I'm not going to mention the other one, you need to get the book to, to know what it's about, is really creating content. So this one is a big one because a lot of people who are in the space of being public figures and influencers and they are out and about, um, they always wonder, am I going to have enough content to talk about? Am I going to be speaking about the same thing over and over and over again? And that's a concern because your audience can actually get tired of you. I know for a fact that there are people that I follow, for instance, on Instagram, and they all do the same stuff. You know, they're cleaning a closet or organizing a space or making some nice cookies. And that's it. That's really it. I mean, it's great if that's your jam. But for me, I need a little more than that. I uh, have depth thinking and I am a very deep person um, and I'm interested in, in value and, um, you know, making nice cookies and decorating and putting some scented candles is really not what, what my jam is. It's not really what my core value is about because I'm not just about, oh, let me dress nice and look nice and have a nice home. For me, it's also about what is my purpose? How can I impact people? How can I educate people? Because my purpose is bigger than just let me have a nice house and a nice home and a nice meal, I need more. So that's why these people, after a while, you know, I see their space or they, whatever they're doing for a little bit. It's like, great, great, great. And then, boom, what else is there? And this is what we need to understand. Are you a like a superficial person who only cares about this level of things? Or are you really trying to change your mindset, to change your inner soul, to become a better person and, and you know, kind of explode and 10x your life? And I'm more of a, the, the latter. So after a while, I got, you know, I lose interest in people who don't have much to offer. And that's okay. That's okay. And if you're not, and if all you, you want is just like a, an, a nice clean home or a nice organized space, that's okay as well. So you have really to know what is it that you're interested in and what really does it for you. Once you answer these questions, then you start really selecting the, the space and the, the, the environment that provides you and that feeds you in a way that you can um, find what you're looking for. So this is, this is me. This is what I wanted to talk about. Uh, the power of elite interviews. I mean, it's a great, great method that I personally used to, you know, to accomplish great things. It's instant. It's not expensive, by the way. Actually, I was on Instagram a few minutes ago and I talked about the cost, the cost of starting these interviews. I didn't start with, with anything. You know, I invested zero dollar to begin. I only had my computer and and that's it and i went on live you know facebook and i got the zoom the free uh, version because i wanted to try it first i wasn't sure if i was going to enjoy it i've never done it before in this capacity and i wanted to see what's going to come out of it so you too can start and zero investment you don't really have to invest anything in it and then try it first, okay? Uh, grab your phone, do a live on Instagram, do a live on Facebook, use a headphone like this, and then see if you like it. If you see that you like it and you wanna do more of it, then start investing, you know? Like for instance, this green screen that I have behind me, it's an amazing piece, but I bought it four times. I bought four different ones until I found what I like. Um, this one actually cost me a little more money than the regular ones that I had before. I went, oh, you know, like um, sometimes people say, oh, yeah, if you can just bring up fabric and put it behind you. It doesn't work that way. I tried it and I hated it. So I bought the first one. They just sent me the frame. So I returned it. Thankfully, they gave me back the money because it was a, a private company, not a big one. And um, I had to pay the shipping. And then I bought three more on Amazon. Uh, one of them was literally just like something you open up and then it, it, it was nice. But the bottom had a huge uh, platform that was really killing my space. So I returned it. And then I bought another one that was kind of a, a little uh, road and then you put fabric on it. I wasn't crazy about it because the fabric, if it's not pulled like this, you know, if it's not stretched... It has like little things like that. So then when you go on a Zoom or you go on StreamYard, the background is not nice. So I changed 
that as well. And then I bought this one, which I really love. It's, um, it's like a little thing like this. It goes inside and then the legs can close. And the beautiful thing, and I'm going to actually show you later how it is. The beautiful thing is that you can close it and then you can literally carry it everywhere. And it takes two seconds to open and close, which is fantastic. I, I love it. And then I am invested in a microphone. I got a professional one. And then these little lights here, let me show you quickly. So I have the ring and I bought the side lighting system. But of course, um, I didn't do it like that overnight or at the beginning, okay? I really started with nothing. I had nothing, only my computer, and it was fine at first. And I started playing. I started playing with different softwares. I tried Zoom. I tried Facebook, I tried Instagram, I tried StreamYard, and then I ended up uh, actually purchasing uh, StreamYard because um, you can stream it on multiple platforms, which is the, the appeal for me. So I stream on Facebook, my Facebook profile, the pages, blah, 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 on YouTube as well, even though I haven't started it doing it that way. But the idea is like, you really have to play with it. Don't spend money starting it and then play with it and see what works best for you until you find a very nice layout. And now I have one of the best layout that I can hope for. I'm very, very happy with it. It doesn't take me much time to have my stage and my thing ready and I can go live or do whatever I want anytime I want without really spending a lot of time um, on it. So again, don't, don't spend too much money when you start. Make sure you try it first in an inexpensive way and you have the way to do it the technology is available and then when you really like it then you can start investing in equipment um, and then i will probably do a video on youtube to just explain what is it that i did and the equipment that i bought to help me do my live event i don't mind sharing that with you guys if it can benefit you so this is pretty much what i wanted to talk about again the book is called the power of elite interviews and it's available on amazon and please get your copy today read it and write me a little review i would be very appreciative of that and then if you do um message me and i will invite you on my show so if you are an entrepreneur or an author or whatever you're doing i would be more than happy to showcase you and um, allow you know people to hear about you and know about you and if nothing you can always just use it as a practice session um hassan thank you so much glad you're here thank you for being here abid uh, thank you <laughs> uh abid he says i do not understand your words uh, well uh, this is this is english <laughs> speaking um, I might be doing some Arabic, I'm not sure yet, but um, we'll see. I mean, it's just like we just have so many hours in the day. Um, all right, guys, thank you go so much for being here. And um, I wish you a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And I will see you on the next one. And I'm sorry if some of you couldn't understand, especially like today, I feel like I'm talking a little bit faster. Uh, but sometimes you just have so much in your mind, you want to really get the message out. So I hope you guys really were able to follow along. Um, if not, shoot me a message and I will probably redo it a little bit slower because I think there is a lot of value in what I was saying on how you can use um, interviews with people that you do live really to improve your life. It's organic, it's authentic, it's quick. Um, so, hey, you know what? Uh, some people spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to gain this, uh, this many benefits. So here you have it. For free, you can get a lot of benefit from doing interviews live. Go for it. But get my book. You will learn more. I will see you on the next time. And salam.